lot of pressure towards his mid side in A. That shock dart had it gotten around the corner through the doorway. Might have resulted in a kill. There's Ace playing close. Great paranoia to open it up as well. A little extra staying power compliments of the flash and haze as the cypher popping off in garage currently. Once another one as well as Mikael is around the corner. The classic over was open his demise, as does the shotgun for Quinn. They're pushing him towards A, where we have a great position from Drone at long C. Or long A, sorry. Oof. So much for great positions. <laughs> Quinn's like a bloodhound and he sniffs out the play. Cutler around the corner with just a specter doesn't really stand a chance against the dynamic force that has been shown, especially when playing as the Reyna. And at this point, I can see that aggressive play finally pays off. So it's Gen G now operating at a player disadvantage. All oh, that spam through the cyber cage is so close. Doing a little bit of damage. He's hitting them shot after shot in the leg. Getting hit by the tripwire, though. The jet's on the site. There's the Leer coming out from Sean, but it doesn't really help too much. As Taze didn't even see it. Wardell on site, trying to survive a little while longer. Dashing around, did manage to find three, but Quinn is there to save the day. It's all up to Drone. The 1v2. Can the Phoenix manage to make this one work? First kill's there. Oh. Into C. So when he tried to go for that wide swing for the kill, he got spotted from the Al drone. We had another attacker that moved in from the garage side, and that's it. But now this round, though, it's going to be Wardell with two kills with the Fan and Eyes, but then it's treated off finally no by Mikael. Away from that Cypher. And now the spike's been planted, and again, it's retake time for TSM. First flash comes out from the Phoenix, that's Drone. Wardell now just behind with the op. Sabrosa again on the back end of the play. Getting things set up to port past the tripwire without going a little bit too far into the vision of Gimon, who's holding currently in the sewers. Finally, action starts to happen, and it's going to be Genji coming out on top of almost all the exchanges. Cutler, who's trying to come in, has somehow turned it back around and brought it to a two on three, but the time is a problem. And the rip card's already been pulled. You can see Cutler has escaped to spawn, and Wardell will do this. With that, though, they're still not pushing forward because they're looking for control inside Garage, no where Win gets the pick on the haze. That's huge right now. Finn now getting an upgrade. As Cutler picks off player one with the Hunter's Fury. There's a paranoia coming out. They dash out onto the site. Quinn's managed to make it up. There's one right to his right. This is so awkward. But. Sabrosa just sticks around and waits and oh that's oh, no. perfect. Well played from Sabrosa and they just never spotted him. Great paranoia coming out, but it actually goes the ult being popped it does allow the omen to get into heaven. Left. But they've still got Phoenix in hell. You've got drones wow. still on site, but they didn't even see him somehow not spotted and everything falls apart. A flawless round. Sabrosa hiding in that dark cover, gonna refresh. There's the Hunter's Fury coming out. Sabrosa though misses that first target and then opens up an opportunity. Quinn goes down in the flying attempt, but Sean is there to at least take care of that. An old oh, man, Sean, through the cyber cage, able to find one more Cutler. Almost got into that corner, trying to survive now. Shock Dart coming out, is it enough? No. Player one somehow escapes that ball of lightning as he ducks into the corner, Cutler on five HP, but look at the aggression elsewhere. Drone has pushed through the garage and he's getting a little risky. Curveball goes up, it goes too high. It actually hits the top of the door frame. It doesn't go around the corner. Flame wall coming in, so the flame wall will at least protect him, sort of. Oh. As they try to push through it, Drone somehow picks up that second kill. We're down to now two against two and a player on each side. Heavily scratched up, you've got Cutler who's scuffed, sitting on 5 HP. 30 seconds and on left. on the opposite side, you've got player one, who's not looking too much better. Wardell is across the map, playing a different portion altogether as the push goes towards that C site. You'll see Sean and his teammate, player one, trying to secure the spike. Yeah, I thought Drone was dead to rights after that blaze wall, and even on top of that, the recon dart, but he's just fast. The reaction time Ten was amazing left. there for his point. Now it has to be a two versus two where you have to play a retake no matter what. Position's going to be given away as Cutler breaks that trap wire, but he's planted. looking to go for that individual play just before he was trying to deny that plant, but now that it's planted, he's just going to wait for Wardell to come. So let's see if they can do it. The advantage definitely comes in for Gen G right now with the position that they have on the pulse plant. Cutler. In a tough scenario with just 5 HP, gonna put a lot of pressure on Wardell. There's the deep dart going in, does give away at least one of their positions. 
as they try to work their way in, they'll take up the camp first. It's down to Cutler now against Sean. Sean looking for the ace with just 5 HP. He doesn't stand a chance. Sean with a massive... Uh, poor Delta. You're dead. He only had to go two, so no real upgrade to Benji. Here comes the lead into the C site, and it starts with drones run it back. They dash in as well with jets, so that's Wardell flying right. into position. Kills going back and forth in both directions, but it is going to be TSM who comes out on top of those fights. And now it's down to just two yet again here for Gen G. They have a massive, dis massive disadvantage as the C site has proved to be somewhat difficult for them to Spike hold. Planted. In the first right full buy round of the second half, Mikhail knows there's one. You can see the pings coming down. Waiting on the other side of that door is Hayes. It's all about one that. He's going to be more patient here, and patience doesn't really have anything to do with it in yeah. the end. It just ends up being a, a battle of who's got more health. It's now down to John. He picked up an ace in the final round of the first half, but not able to repeat that going towards C, but really what can be done? Iman has a great flash that comes through, somehow gets the kill on the drone, but Wardell goes on a shooting spree. Gen G going to get at least one kill as player one steps up with the Sheriff. Not exactly the home run they needed. It's more of a sacrifice bunt. <laughs> it's going to come down to a two on three. You've got Sean moving into position. The Stinger does work out OK for the Reyna. Mikael just behind. No surprise that Sean is one of the players in this position. He's been here before, and he's managed to find success for them in the past. Out goes the Leer. The Dart giving away their positions, but it's a great spike plant position coming in for TSM. Now there's weapon upgrades on the site, and you can see Sean's the first one to try to grab one. Recon Dart does go out, gives away positions. They know that there's no one on the site. It's going to be a difficult scenario for them, and yeah, now it's even harder. They and TSM attempts to deliver a coup de gras to Gen G. Now there's the ult being popped. Omen now getting back behind enemy lines. Both Omens actually using the ults. So both getting some intel on the play. The Aldrin flies right past Wardell, who's now trying to get inside that cyber cage to get away. And again, they'll escape towards Long, and they'll play for the post plant. Now, the spike isn't perfectly planted for them, so it's going to require a little bit more proactive effort. As they've now gone onto the site, tapping the spike. Hunter's Fury comes out, but it's a little bit early as the pulses go down range, but they're not actually on the spike as of yet. Pulses still coming out as they now jump onto that spike one. They're about to get it, potentially, that shock dart. May have been enough, but it ends oh, up wow. working out in the you end for TSM. Suck. It was tough to see what was going on. This map point, it's 12 to 6, and it's also a broken economy for Gen.G. No more meddling. So Broza picks off the first of the defense. Player 1 does do significant damage. An additional damage dealt as well to Cypher. So Broza finding another kill on the win as he clips the bullets through the wall. Gimon, yeah, he'll hear it, spots out the positional change coming in from Sobroza. And that's at least a nice opportunity for Gen Chi to try and find an, a bit of an opening. Again, though, they're at the disadvantage, and even more so, I don't think they realize that Cutler has actually made it out onto C. Yeah. He's up on top of the left. stacks in the corner. The rest of the team is starting to make their way out, and they're going to secure the spike. spike now, Gimon is stuck in a really difficult position because he's got players coming in potentially through doors. That's Drone who's sitting on the back end of the play, and then he's got players waiting for him in the seaside as well. So he really needs his teammates coming in from spawn to put pressure on in. TSM. One but it's a trade-off and an advantage for TSM. So it's leaving only one more. The recon dart comes through. Shock dart's gonna go down. Mikhail has to be careful. Decides to get back in the boathouse so he can open fire with the Ares, and he's got targets on both sides. Not sure which one to favor. Ends up gunning down two. Haze comes in with a bit of a save towards the end, but with the amount of health left, it's unlikely we'll see much other than just a spike plant come in here. So Rosa does have that LNG, and he's just spamming towards that dark cover. Got a little bit scary for the Jet who is waiting beyond it. That's Quinn. Gen G playing this one patient, though. Not going in gung ho, knowing that that LNG is a Well, unfortunately, one's going to fall the second fairly soon to right because it's not connect. Unfortunately for Hayes, that's like three of them. But that third bullet missed success. Even though they've managed to make it onto B and they'll get the spike plan out of this. He's got them in such a difficult position because he's. 30 seconds kind of left. surrounded despite being Spike one person. Planted. The players coming from Cat have to worry about him. The player coming Shadows. from Spawn has to worry about him. So Rosa has to pop his chest up and make himself big, but he doesn't do it in time. Cutler is there with at least a nice trade. 
And Mikael is going to be looking to take things back in their favor, but it's a two on four, and now just a one on four. Mikael swaps to the Phantom, but it won't be enough. TSM should take their first round. Yeah, and it's unfortunate for Jinji at that point. At least Mikael gets the first kill onto Wardell, trying to build up his ultimate points too. And as he gets killed, that's going to be it. So they don't save any weapons. It's been play up and over the wall. There it is. There's the updraft. You can see him start that motion, no looking for a player up in heaven, not quite done to spot them. There's the Hunter's Fury coming out. Mikael drops Haze. Drone is in the entry, but traded out immediately by player one. Who gets a bit of a lucky frag onto the next target. Leaping around on site. There's still one more present. 30 seconds left. The shock dart's not going to be where it needs to be. It's now down to a two on three and TSM again with the disadvantage has watched it just evaporate. His reign of play has been so good in the past. The timing, oh, it almost backfires, but somehow able to escape. Uses the dismiss to get some distance from his targets. Cyber Cage goes down, Shock Dart lands right in player one's lap, so that'll put him Get down on the 51 way. HP. He has to be careful now as his teammates are starting to fall around him. They lost their cat hold as Sabrosa picked off Sean Good Cutler. is going to go down to uh, player one with the Phantom, who's still in position. PL1 making himself big and mighty on that site, but not enough HP to survive the onslaught that came his direction. Mikael. He's got the Odin. 30 and seconds drone left. Is there. Now Wardell wants to get that spike plant, get that guaranteed cash. The flash, flash player through. There's the flash Please and the do. peak. And oh, never mind. Tried to use the Hunter's Fury as a masking utility. So with that ultra rocket so left. loud, you sometimes don't hear the port. But there's a port coming in for the defense. That'll allow the Omen to get into the back of sight in the boathouse. That's now Gimon backing up this B-side defense. It's down one to just two with one of them, Sabrosa. He was so low on HP, his last teammate was Cutler, picked off some targets have actually already gone past and in towards the site they go. Gwyn starts getting spammed through the box, doesn't stand a chance. Keep on, actually able to do a little bit of extra damage, but now Sean is on damage control, trying to spin 30 seconds back left. his team, Spike waiting planted. for the remaining two to get into position. It's a promising look for TSM that puts them in the driver's seat on this A site, and they've managed to scoop up a bit of hardware to work with as well. Sean now shifting back towards short as his teammates get into position. The Al drone will be coming through. There's one right to their immediate, right by the big tree that's hazed. And just like that, it's all spun around. Down to the breach, it's drone with a great first shot on the PL1. But a 3K for Sean neutralizes the 3K from drone. Bordell again with that off. But it's Quinn on the other side. He draws blood first, tries to get away, but just not prepared for that close target. Sabrosa catches him off guard a bit. Shadow Step will allow Sabrosa to take out the window, and he actually decides to back off that play. Won't over advance. The door was closed. They've got a bit of a split play I going on exactly. right now. As there's presence towards Cat and B. Neural Theft does come through, and that'll give away positions. Sean with the Leer trying to escape. Gonna Leer again just to guarantee the safe route away. Oh, almost clipped by Wardell, who was holding the line. But again, they've got control of A. They're just trying to figure out what they do here. This is a very awkward setup. The spike is across the map. Now, Sabrosa does pick off player one, and Wardell's found a pick as well. Mm -hmm. Again, this is just really awkward, but now the spike has made it over, and they've isolated these players. They had a one-on-one -on, -one on B, but Sean has shifted away, knowing that the spike is spike actually planted. heading A. That gives Wardell an opportunity to flank. And that results in Sean having to watch their backs, but they get around the bend just in time to dodge that. And Sean is just waiting for Wardell on the other side. So it's a two on three retake. Very much winnable for Gen G, but TSM has to make a mistake. A big mistake on top of that. And Sean at that point doesn't even want to pop up the Empress. So they know at this point they kind of want to go for it, but only halfway, not fully commit. That's what he's doing. He's looking for the third, and he gets it! They're going to be able to get this one on a two versus three, make that even a two versus four. What happens now is we've got Gen G working towards A. You've got Cutler around the corner with a Spectre. The dark cover will come in. And the shock dart, depending Take on the flight. timing, could do lethal damage. But they're going to start wandering past on spam. It's going to go out instead. Shock dart's going to come in after the fact. And now the rotate already in for TSM. They may lose sight control for just a moment, but they're going to be playing towards Spike the retake. It's a five-on-five five retake on the A site. Stealing Even sight. if Shark Dart prevents anybody from switching towards the full bed, they could actually just 
warp through and just run from both angles and it works out. Three of them to fall. We have the Aperture Shot to come out too. And they're just getting wiped out. GMD is going to be the last one, only with the share. And again, all they really want was to try to get a spike. Kind of leaves a nice shot there onto Zabrosa. Holy flash gets behind Drone, but Drone turns over and gets the 180 Bulldog. And it's going to be another round coming in for TSM. Two rounds in a row. Let's not write them off yet here for TSM. They have the money to work with, but they still, at this point, because they invested so much on that previous round, only have Bulldogs to work with where Gen G has the full ARs. Gen G has the rounds to fall back on, but TSM has the bankroll currently, Let's a little bit of extra fun. cash in their piggy banks after the buy comes through. It's Bulldogs. So it's not exactly perfect. But bringing in what they brought in from the previous round means it's an extra way to save some cheddar. Gen G grouped outside of A currently. Cypher, player one, all the way up in mid in the cubby. There is a three player hold on A currently, but it's mostly focused towards short. We've got Cutler, Drone, and Sabrosa all playing short with Cutler being the only one really focusing towards A. A Leer and an Aldro come out first. And there's the dark cover, no surprise there. Quinn will likely be the one to dash out, and there it is. The likely Paranoia as well off to the left at some point to guarantee access to the site being a little bit easier. Spike now just making its way on the site. Sabrosa has picked off one, but there's a trade Spike coming out, planted. and Sean chimes in as the Reina, a dismiss peak. Can be so infuriating as a player to be on the other side of that one as you watch that ghost-like figure disappear and just like that the odds disappearing for both teams actually it's come down now to a two on two as sean has done what sean does best there's the rolling thunder coming the throne to try and make the retake a bit easier but they still got to deal with sean he's already got one ace this starting to peek past the smoke that's down it's a fault line coming out Wardell's waiting on the other side of this one. Down there's the flashes coming out as they start to make their push. Drone has to go big as they've already got up one up in heaven. Nice flick 30 over seconds from left. Sabrosa with the off. But now they flash out as they try and slow this down even more. Drone's in wow. position with a specter able to gun down Mikael. The battle goes Dusted. back and forth, but it's TSM who manages to bring it down to a two on two. And the clock is on their side. 15 seconds left, and Drone's still here on the site. They haven't been able to start the spike oh. 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. GMD is on a two versus one. Really, he just got to look into the site. He's looking to at least try to go for a one and player player landing. Landing. But Here's the footsteps nope. across the board, and that's it. They're going to win on something for TSM. And that is a Herculean hole. Well, carried it into that previous round, but the Spectre from Drone. Wardell wisely gets into a better position. The paranoia actually blinds Quinn, but it's nearsightedness, so he can still see that close target and ends up using the Blade Storm masterfully. Player one spots out the alarm bot waiting around the corner. They're going to shift over to A, where again they've got to contest with Drone. And I believe Drone was spotted by player one. Yeah, you can see the line hold right there, and a great dink shot through the wall from player one means that this A site is now opened up. There is still some Killjoy utility here, including the turret and the Nano Swarms, but it's a little bit late on the deployment of those Nano Swarms, so they actually get past and take no damage. It will be Spike a two planted. on three. Cutler and Hazed working together to try to get back into this A site. Got some damage dealt to that Cypher, who's currently sitting in the cubby on long. They take out the tripwire, and they'll be moving into position to contest with player one. They found my wire. Or at least he unfortunately actually does not get the kill onto Hayes. So Hayes dispatches him with the headshot and they're moving inside that site. It's down to a two versus two. They can't really do anything. It's not that useful, but Hayes continues to walk forward, gets the headshot on to win, and Cutler with the last one as well. No utilities needed. Just walk silently, see them peek out. Fordell tried to get around the edge of this dark cover just like this. It was spotted, but it's a quick shot that comes out. Doesn't matter. Welcome Quinn is there with the punish. World. Now the Viper ult will be popped on B, and it's in the perfect position as well. So that'll potentially scare them off. away from the B site. And you can see they're already like, all right, well, I guess we have to go A. Uh, so they're going to start shifting towards A, where yet again, despite this Viper ult, they're putting a lot of faith on him off again. You can't deny how Sean is good right now in the series. So 
despite them having their utilities for the retake, you just had to try to land your shot to get that team player from Genji, which they did. Quick shots coming out from Huynh after we saw Cutler pick things up first. Gen G bring us back to three on three. There's the ult sending Sabroza into attacker spawn. They're going to watch their flank, though. They got to keep an eye on their six. Now, Hazed is still in position. With all the utility that's laid down from their Killjoy, they have some things they still have to work through, despite the fact that Cutler is watching, not currently alive. That utility still remains. Uh, most concerning, obviously, the alarm bot, which is waiting right around the corner. Do they spot it? Well, no, it does get triggered, and it gives away the play towards left. Evan. They've still got Sabrosa on the flank. They've got Haze here as well, but Wardell... Uh, wait, excuse me, watching that line. Missed shot from Huynh, though, and a rare miss at that. That puts the attackers in a really weird position. They have to run to this B site where now they're going to be wandering into Wardell, who's got the eyes Ten out. Seconds left. He's waiting for them. He's ready. One Does he hit the clicks? There's the first one going his way. The smoke Woo. goes down, but Wardell with the jumping knife from the Blade Storm to change that. Enemy down. And Hazed still going big, Kevin. Wants a little bit more, sticks around too long. Needs backup from Sabrosa, who actually comes I up empty-handed. Exactly so despite the early heroics from the Viper, Anti-Venom has been applied, and they've brought themselves to a three-on-three. Three. They're going to start working their way into the B site. And they should be able to get across. Deep camera coming in. But there's that difficult ult to deal with the Rolling Thunder. The Showstopper as well sends a rocket into spawn. A breach charge coming out as they start to work their way in. cutler has got one going right around the corner. There's player one from up on top. Player one's going to find them all. It's four kills on the round for the former Brimstone Turtle but I, I would like to believe that that fact still remains the same. Now, they do have the Killjoy ult for TSM locked down. Going to make it difficult for them to move. Now, player one has picked off drone. You could hear the long-range sheriff shot come out, but it was off the mark. And player oh, one's going to be feet. backing off. They're going to be heading back towards B. There's Rolling Thunder coming into that B 30 site. Seconds Paranoia left. as well. Flashpoint in. They're not taking anything for granted. They're going to take this just as if this was a full buy coming in from TSM. Spike planted. And they'll get the spike down as well. Now, sabrosa has no got a good line of sight, and that's player one falling. That's a rifle pickup for Sabrosa, a player you don't want to give that you to, but gets caught going for the paranoia as Imon is ready. Now, there is that Killjoy ult lockdown being popped from Cutler. But they can get away from this one and still play towards the spike. You can see their jet now escaping into B main. They'll try to make it back out. Spike is open and planted for them. Hayes with a nice shot onto Mikhail. And that warp down from the Viper makes it difficult. They're going to keep working their way in. But it's come down to a two on two. The spike being stuck. They've actually managed to make it work. The thrifty round comes through. But so far, what I really like here from TSM is the rounds where they just don't want to give any pacing to GG. They always push so aggressively because that mid side yeah. where Wardell gets a kill or two before he dies, and it's good enough because it gives that information away. This time, they tried to go aggressively from the A side on Gen G, but Wardell rotated from the rope side and was able to win that fight versus win that went for the right click with the knives and didn't pay off. The rest of them are on Eco, and he's on low HP at 2 HP right now for win. So it's going to be very hard for Gen G to try to rotate back from ropes over to this B side. And he killed. Bordell picking off wind, spamming through the Ooh. wall, actually gets a flick back with a spray transfer. It's Sabrosa who comes in and offers up some support, but it's a 3k on the round for Bordell. Well done for him. Uh, a great hold on his side to allow his last to easily get the kills. And look at that, he doesn't even care anymore. Top Ryan going with the surprise attack, getting two kills of his own. Exactly and getting nothing off here. So the last three guys are moving inside the One side. player remaining. Stealing sight. Quick shot comes in from Wardell just before the Rolling Thunder hits. Quinn just blind for days there. Mikhail right around the corner, hiding behind that toxic wall. It's Mikhail trying to first with Quinn, and jeez, Mikhail mops up. That's four kills as a picking off Quinn. Cover going out. Giving the advantage to TSM. Drone's pretty low on HP. Mikhail just times it well and executes his doppelganger to bring us back to even strength. But again, with the HP, what it is, 
It's going to be tough for a drone to have much of an impact. It's all going to be in the backup from drone. The flashes, and of course, the fault lines that come through. There they go, working their way out on this site. The cyber cage doesn't slow them down. This Wardell blows right past it. Nick Ayala has the presence of mind to keep his eyes on the prize. The prize being that section of Kabi back behind him. It's now a three on two. TSM looking rough currently as Cutler is really going to have to do a lot of this fight. 30 seconds left. With just 11 HP, takes down another target. That's Sean falling as well. That's huge in that not only does his rifle deal damage, but as the raise, he's also got one enemy shells. Last it's come standing. down though to a one-on-one. -on -one. Cutler's on 11 HP as Mikael quickly picks up the frag onto drone, goes for the tap plant, tries to bait Ten out seconds the play. Left. But Cutler has to dedicate to the plant in a moment. He's still playing with that clock, trying to bait out his opposition. And now he goes for the dedication. No, he's baited him out. Win the round. So he knew that Mikael was going to push out and somehow, or GMD rather, and somehow he just gets that. That big play from, uh, from Cutler to clutch that one versus one. That is brutal. There's a nice pickup as well coming in from Wardell, spamming through the sign. Blocking sight. But there's trades coming back in for Gen G, working with suboptimal machine guns of the sub-machine gun variety. And it's worked out for them. Now, Quinn's in position. There's the flashpoint through the cloud burst, making it hard to spot his target. But Ward eventually breaks past that spiraling smoke and brings us to this point. Going big right now, but it's all up to Sean. Sean has been lights out all series long. He's got one target beneath, Ooh. but no! Attacker the wall takes the stinger and sends 